church. It's good to have you. Uh, it's, according to the clock, it's time to start, but we don't follow the clock too much around here. But I uh, want to make a few announcements. want to welcome everybody here. A couple of announcements. Uh, if you want to go to Africa next year, see Russ and Mary Huff. There he is. Right there, and glad to see Russ, Russ up and standing on his two feet today. Very good. Had a little episode last week, but doing better. Uh, a summer vacation. We're having uh, a children's program on, su- on Wednesday nights. Now we're not sending the bus out, but last week we had a lot of people uh, who normally come uh, bring their own children. And uh, so that was exciting to see that. Uh, got a thing for the women. Uh, Seaside Escape, and the uh, information is out there on the table. You can see uh, Kay McGovern, Ann Smith, and Arant, if you can catch up with her. And uh, about this event for just women, uh, strictly women only, and uh, they do this uh, annually and uh, encourage you to go if you're a woman and uh, see them about that. Vacation Bible School, Miss Audrey in her loudest voice is going to tell you about Vacation Bible School. Well, yeah, that's my time, nine seconds. (laughs) Uh, Is that it? Oh, next Sunday, uh, we're only going to have one service. Your bulletin is not the Bible, and so it has errors in it. Uh, So it says you're going to have an 830 service next Sunday. You will not have one. Uh, Pastor Dario is uh, speaking, so uh, come and uh, celebrate uh, Father's Day here. We have a gift for all you fathers, and I'm not going to tell you what it is, keep you in suspense. So y'all come and be a part of our service next Sunday. Any other announcements? All right, a lot of people out today, I know. People have told me they weren't going to be here. So, uh, but y'all are here, and that's all that matters. We're glad you're here. This is the day the Lord has made. The Bible says, let us rejoice and be glad in it. So I hope you'll get on your happy face very quickly. Some of you look like you need a happy face. Uh, please stand with me. Oh, excuse me. We're going to pray first. I need to pray. I need to pray. I need to pray. I need to pray. I need to practice. So let us pray. Lord God. Oh, man. Lord God. What does all that mean? It means you created the heavens and the universe. You're God. Apart from you, we are nothing. We would not even exist. Apart from you, we can do nothing. Lord, you're our master. (laughs) How often we forget that during the week. Lord, I pray today (laughs) that your glory would fall, that your spirit would come, that you would tabernacle, you would dwell among your people. Lord, that we would all realize your presence, your richness. Father, that we would today be given an ear to hear. Lord, give me an ear to hear. Father, I've spent all week preparing a sermon and spending time praying over it. And Lord, even this morning, I still need you more than I've ever needed you before. And we all do. We need need you in order to receive, to hear what you have for us. And I, I pray today, Father, that we would all sit in anticipation and realize, Father, that you tell us your word will not return void and Lord, your word is living and powerful and it goes out and it changes lives and it sets the captives free. And so today, Father, I pray that we will look with anticipation to your word as we, as we worship together in this house. And Lord, may we truly worship you, not just sing songs and not just mouth words, but Lord, that we would, we would truly worship you with all our heart 
with all our mind, soul, strength. Father God, just come. Lord, I pray today that you will forgive us of our sins and Lord, that we would confess our sins and realize, Lord, the quicker we come to you with confession and repentance, the, the quicker we're healed, the quicker we're saved, the quicker, uh, Lord, we're restored and, and we have your joy within us. I pray that nothing would separate us today from your love. Father, deliver us from the evil one. Deliver us from Satan. Father, may this time right now be sacred. May it be your time. May you sanctify your people. May you set us apart through your word. Lord, have your way. Help me to get out of the way. Be with our, our singers and our instrumentalists, Father. Help them to get out of the way. Lord, let you, let you reign through them today, and myself and all of us here. Oh, Lord God, that we would see your glory and your majesty. Come, Lord Jesus. Send your Holy Spirit now. It's in Jesus' name we pray. All God's people said, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. There's a lot of things you can say, and I encourage you to say them this morning. If you are, if you're able, please stand with us as the praise team leads us in worship. Hallelujah. Yes, it is. because we don't have to worry about what happened um, then. Uh, what's coming up is what, what's going on now. The Lord has saved us, returned us, we've repented from our sins, we've put our trust and faith in them, in him, and that was then, this is now. So let's continue to lift up our Lord. We used to 
to hide from the light. We made friends with the night. We were heading the wrong way on a one-way track. Going nowhere fast. We got used to the dark. We thought, this is who we are. And we figured that we were just too far gone. But we were wrong. Cause luck came running like a river. We got washed in the water. We just pray that, man, every step of the way, um, we'll just continue to look to him and that he will guide us every step. Sing with us step by step.
step by step you lead me and I will follow you all of my days. Oh, Lord God. Oh, Father God, please show up today. and Bless your people. Oh, pour out a blessing that uh, Father, we can't, we can't withhold it. Flow over into other people's lives. In Jesus' name. We're here to worship God through our tithes and offerings now and through our care ministry and encourage you, if you're a first-time guest with us today, we're really glad to have you. Please take one of the care cards as they're passed and fill it out. And uh, if you've been here before, then still take a care card and put your name on the front and on the back. Uh, any person or someone who might have particular needs that our care ministry which meets on Tuesday nights, uh, can minister to. And I encourage you to come and look at the sheet out on the table and uh, sign up for one week a month. That's all it is, one week a month and be a part of our care ministry. When you come, we do not tell you what to do. We have several things you can do. You can pray, you can write a card or a letter, you can make a phone call, you can even go out and make a visit. But you decide what it is uh, that you're comfortable doing and uh, then you just do that. And uh, it'll, be, it'll mean a lot. We have a lot of people show up on Tuesday night. So uh, turn to your neighbor and say, he's talking about me. <laughs> yeah, so you come right on out. We'd love to have you. Talking about you, 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 you. <laughs> Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being in your house this morning, Lord. It is a privilege. Thank you, Lord, for each and every person you are blessed to be here. Thank you, Lord, for all the many blessings, so many that we take for granted just eating, drinking, and being able to function on our own. There's so yes. many things that we take for granted that you bless us with. We just thank you, Lord. And we just ask and pray, Lord, that you would bless this service and bless this offering, Lord, for the upbuilding your kingdom. Bless everything that's done and said here today will be pleasing in your sight. We ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs> When I started looking at this uh, song for the special uh, um, a while ago, um, I thought it's got this little part that says, just to know you and to make you known. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. That would kind of go along with what we have at our church, our church motto. But um, this past week, it's really hit me. You know, we need to draw that chalk circle around and, and really think about this song as ourselves. You know, like a tree planted by the water, we never will run dry. And how, you know, basically we, we need to thrive. We should thrive and just continue to grow and produce fruit. And it's not a church thing. I mean, it is a church thing, but... I think it starts with each one of us first. It starts with me, you know what I mean? And then uh, it'll move on, and I think the church will be blessed, and everybody else will be blessed by it. But uh, I don't know, I just pray that y'all will, will think about this, not in terms of our church necessarily, but on an individual basis. It's, it's poignant that way. All right. <laughs> Many a dream has died. Like a tree planted by the water, we never will run dry.
children here this morning that would like to go to children's church and don't want to sit in here and listen to my sermon y'all may leave all right we've got two qualified people over there very good we're looking this morning at a lot of scripture verses i've got most of them on the screen i hope i hope you brought your bibles and uh, as we go through them i've at least write them down so you can go back later because we're going to go put them through them all pretty quickly uh, the Lord willing, because there's a whole lot here today. Uh, are you looking forward to going to heaven? Amen. All right. I got a pretty good amen this morning. That's good. I hope we are, uh, because that's our hope. Uh, this world is uh, not long uh, for our existence anyway, and uh, if we don't have a hope of heaven, then uh, what are we doing here? I mean, we're, we're, we're not going to live as happy and joyful a life here is we don't, if we're not looking forward to heaven. Uh, human beings have always been intrigued by the thought of heaven, life after death in a sense. Uh, just about every culture uh, that we can imagine has some, some, ish, some, some myth or some, some indication of what heaven is and uh, thoughts about uh, the afterlife. Uh, the Aborigines, the Native Americans, uh, uh, the Viking, the Norsemen had this uh, view the the uh, Egyptians the Romans the Greeks uh, the Chinese the Indians the Japanese you just name it uh, every culture pretty much has had some idea about the afterlife and the reason for that is I believe it's found in the book of Ecclesiastes it says that we have eternity in our hearts God made us uh, three three parts he made us body and soul and spirit 
and, and our spirit and our soul knows that this is, there, this is not it. The life on this earth, no matter how many years we live, is not what it's all about. There's something beyond, and we, we don't know exactly what that is, and especially if, if you don't read the Bible, you're not going to really understand what it is. But um, we've got this, 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 this question in our hearts and minds that there's got to be something else, and most people believe that. Christians, of all people, should look forward to heaven. Christians of all people should look forward to heaven. And I encourage you uh, to be thinking about today. It's sad that we uh, have a misunderstanding of what heaven is. So many people have a misunderstanding. Paul's attitude about heaven was this. For me to live is Christ. To live is, is all about, I want, I want my life to be all wrapped up while I'm on this earth in, in loving Jesus and serving Jesus and realizing that he's in control of everything. He's my Lord. He's my master. He's my savior. And I just want everything. I want to deny myself, take up my cross, and follow Jesus. His attitude was, was for me to live as Christ, but to die is gain. I think too many people today are worried about dying, and, and it, is, it is an unknown and it's acceptable for us to have some questions about dying. But if we're truly living in the Lord and walking with Jesus Christ, then dying should be gain. We should be, realize that it's far better. He says, but if I live on the, in the flesh, this will mean fruit from my labor. If I stay here in the world, then I'm here to serve God and hopefully to bear fruit for him, to, to, to help disciple other people, lead other people to the Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm here for a purpose. It's to glorify him. It's to bear fruit to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, yet what I choose, I cannot tell what I shall choose, but I'm hard-pressed between the two. How many of us this morning are hard-pressed between living here and going to heaven? I think too many of us are hanging on to here. Thinking it's going to last forever. We don't think about tomorrow. Paul is hard pressed between the two. A desire to depart. A hunger to depart. And be with Christ which is far better. Now when he says to depart. And uh, he says uh, to, 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 to go and be with Christ. To live as Christ and to die as gain. He's talking about when he dies. He believes immediately. He's going to go be with, with, with Jesus. He's, he's not going to have this soul sleep or this time where he waits in purgatory or whatever. He's going to be with Jesus. And he says this over and over again. In fact, he goes on in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and says, So we are always confident, underline always, confident, we have faith, always, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we're absent from the Lord. While I'm in this body, uh, which most of us love our bodies, and hope, 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 hope we have good health, but, but you know, uh, as long as I'm in this body, I'm absent from the Lord. I, you know, we can have the Lord within us, we can have the Holy Spirit, but, but we, we, we're just not right in the presence of God. I desire, I, I, I prayed all morning, I prayed yesterday, that the God would show up here this morning, that we could see him, that we could, you know, like, like the disciples, we could taste him and uh, touch him and, and know him, and, and, but, but we're living behind a veil right now, and so we, we can't know him like that, but uh, Paul's talking here about knowing him. Uh, we walk by faith, not by sight. We, 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 don't, we don't see this. We don't see God. We don't see heaven, but if you're a Christian, you should know it, and, and you should have the Holy Spirit dwelling within you, and and you should have some understanding of what walking with God is like, like and, and some understanding of knowing the presence of God and, and praying with him. I, you know, are you praying? Are you seeking God with all your heart? You know, he, he says you will find him. You know, and you're going to have some joy in this life and you're going to have some peace if, 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 if you're seeking him. But, but we just can't experience it all now. And don't you see what Paul's saying here? Man, I can't wait for the day when I'm going to live with him in joy and love and peace and happiness. All that's going to be mine forever and there's not going to be a dull day in my life. You know, there's not going to be sorrow or tears anymore. You know, I'm going to live with Jesus, and I can't wait to live with Jesus. But while I'm here, I want to do what he's telling me to do. And I want to be full of his spirit in order to do that. We walk by faith, not by sight, but we're confident, yes, we are well pleased. Man, I'm happy. Happy. <laughs> I'm happy rather to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Paul's excited. Sad to say in the church today that not everybody's excited because we're hanging on to this world. Somebody sent me a, a, a song by Chris Tomlin this week 
Going Home, I think was the name of Man, I, I heard that song, and I just, man, I wanted to go home. I want to go home and be with Jesus. Y'all look that up, Chris Tomlin, Home or Going Home or something like that. Uh, but it, it was awesome. Many people believe, and this is one reason I don't think a lot of people are excited about heaven. We think heaven is going to be boring. Some of you teenagers can really say that word well. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't y'all do that right now? Boring. You know? <laughs> we think that's what we think we're gonna float around in heaven and play on harps. Who came up with that blooming idea? We're not gonna be sitting on clouds. Cloud, heaven is a lot more than clouds. And that's why we think, well, God, it's gonna be an endless church service. Wow. Well, it is gonna be a lot of worship and praise. Uh, but we're going to be living in the light of God. It's going to be an awesome church service, but we're not, I don't believe we're just going to be uh, sitting in chairs and, or sitting on clouds and worshiping God. All, we're going to worship God, but we're going to worship him in what we're doing. We're going to be doing things in heaven. The Bible tells us that, you know. It's not going to be an endless church service. We're not going to be disembodied spirits. I think that's another thing. We think we're going to all be Caspers, you know, the ghosts in heaven. We're going to be floating around. Man, we Ultimately, we're going to have bodies, but somehow I believe we have some kind of form even when we go to heaven before we get our resurrected body. We'll talk about that a little bit more uh, later. Uh, but that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says we're not going to be floating around on crowds. In fact, this is what Jesus says. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Uh, in the King James Bible, they put mansions, the word mansions there. Uh, really, it means dwelling places or rooms, you know. God, Jesus is going to build us a room in his father's house. He's going to build us a place where we can dwell, you know. I, I guess they thought, well, hey, any room God builds is going to be a mansion. And so, <laughs> wow, that's going to be awesome. So, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. So what, what does he describe heaven as about? His father's house. It's a house. It's a place. He says it's a place, and he's going to go prepare a room for you and me, and we can go live with him forever. It's not cloud. He doesn't say, I'm going I'm to get you a cloud, and I'm going to get you a harp. No, we're going to have a room in the father's house. We, we're going to live with Jesus. You know, that's awesome. The, the, the picture here, in Jesus' day, the, the people would have understood him to say, you know, it, it, this is the picture of, of a groom going and asking a woman to marry him, and then they have a betrothal period, and, 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 and so he goes back to his father's house during their betrothal, betrothal period, and he builds on to his father's house a room. The families used to live together. Uh, a lot more in that day. And so you didn't go out and build you a new house and buy you five acres out here. You know, you went back to your daddy's house and you built on a room. And after a while, when your mom and daddy died, you took that over and your children, you know, came in. So he was going to go back and the bride would go, uh, the groom would go back and build a room onto the father's house. And then he said, I will come back and get you. And when, the, when it was time for the, they didn't really set a date for the wedding like we do. It was when the room got finished. You know, they'd go back, and, and, and then they would bring the bride, and, and the bride had to be ready. You know, that's the story of the ten virgins, you know. Uh, some had oil in their lamps, and others didn't, so, so they had to be ready, and we have to be ready. We don't know when Jesus is coming. We don't know when he's going to take us home. So we're living in anticipation of going to the Father's house, but I want you to understand, it's a place. It's not an endless church service. We don't, this week, I'm going off with my family all 17 or 18, I'm not sure exactly, last count, and we're going to stay a week at the beach. I'm going to need to take a vacation after I go on vacation. Cause it's gonna, but I'm going to love it. We're going to all be together, and after I pull out a few more hairs, you know, I, I, it's going to be good. It's going to be good, and I look forward to it. That's what we should be looking forward to. You know, many of us have loved ones who have departed. We're going to be with them. They're going to have rooms in the Father's house. It's going to be a place. We're going to have fellowship. We're, we, we're going to... No, as we're known, but we need to understand something. The death rate is uh, 100%. We're all going to die. <laughs> 250,000 people a day die in the world. I think it's about three people every second of the day. There's, eterni there's eternity in front of them, and there are only two destinations, heaven and hell. 
Now, you might not like hell. C.S. Lewis says if he could take one doctrine out of the Bible, he would have taken out hell. There are a lot of people. I, I don't fully understand it, but I know there is a hell. God made a hell. And uh, it's made for people who just are not going to bow to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you gave them all eternity, like Satan, they would try to rebel against God. And that would not make it heaven. So there's a place for these people who will not yield to God. As hard as it is, and, and you know, God, God loves these people. Psalm 39.5 says, every man at his best is just a breath. He's just a vapor. You young people, if you don't believe that, just wait a little while and you're going to realize it. When you get to be my age, you're going to realize, God, life, damn, it's gone. Your children, I remember when they were just, I remember when you weren't even born, some of you, and I, I mean, now they're growing up and it's just like that. Amen? Amen. If you don't know it, have you, have you some children. But Christians have no reason to fear death. We, have, we, we might not be able to see what's on the other side fully, but hey amen, you put your hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus came to deliver us from sin and death. Hebrews chapter 2 says, though through, through death he might destroy him who had the power over death, that is the devil, uh, and release those who through, who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Man, we, we have been set free. That's why we believe in Jesus. That's why we have to believe in his, his perfect life, his, his death on the cross for our sins, his, his burial, his resurrection. In three days, he conquered the grave. He conquered death. Over 500 people at one time saw him. None of the apostles ever denied that Jesus rose from the dead. All of them, save one, went, went to martyrs' deaths, and they never denounced the fact that they saw Jesus. Why? Because they saw him. He was alive. He didn't swoon. He was dead. The Roman soldiers stuck a spear in him. Said he's dead. They were really good at identifying dead people because they had to kill him. And, and so he was dead and he rose three days. And then, and then he's on a hillside with a whole bunch more. And he ascends into heaven and he tells them he's going to come back in the same way. <laughs> we should not fear death. The reason we fear death, let me tell you this. Put this in your pipe. No, we're not supposed to smoke, are we? <laughs> Put this in your bonnet. Uh, if you're living close to Jesus, you're not going to fear death nearly as much. If you're walking with the Lord. And you know how you walk with the Lord? Well, you repent of your sins. And you turn your life over to him and you receive salvation. And, and you ask him to come into your life. And every day of our lives, we need to keep doing that. Say, Lord, I need you. You know that song, I need thee every hour? Well, then that's what we need to be doing. We, and, and if we're living close to Jesus... It's less likely that you're going to fear death. And that's where Paul was here. In fact, Paul almost gets in death's face and taunts death. Says, give me your best shot, man. I ain't worried about you. Because Paul is living close to Jesus. He's filled with the Spirit of God. And he's seeking God with all his heart. He realizes he's a sinner. And he confesses his sin. And he says, the things I don't want to do, I do. And the things I, 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 don't, I should do, I, I don't want to do. And, you know, he says there's a battle going in with, on with him. But he realizes the grace and mercy of God. He realizes that Jesus is his only hope. And so he wants to get as close to Jesus and full of Jesus as he can. So he doesn't fear death. Listen to what he says in 1 Corinthians 15. Death is swallowed up in victory. My Jesus won my victory. You know, and I, man, death has no... No effect. Oh, death, where is your sting? Come on. Show it to me. You know, oh, Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin. We've all sinned. We all fall short of the glory of God. And the strength of sin is the law. If you read the Bible, just read the Ten Commandments. Just read the two great commandments. Love God with all your heart. Love your neighbor as yourself. And you flunk. And you flunk terribly. You know, and so, so Satan wants to come and lay a guilt trip on us and he wants to accuse us that we're sinners and we're going to die. You know what you need to do when you have those feelings and when, when your flesh or Satan starts tempting you in that way? Say, yes, you're right, I'm a sinner, but I have a Savior who died for my sins. And it's not based on how good I look or how smart I am or anything of merit. It's based on what he did for me because he loved me so much, God loved me so much, that he sent his one and only son to die for me. Hallelujah, is that love or what? How many of you would send your own son to die for me? It's a hard thing to do, but God did it. Don't think God didn't weep. Don't think God uh, did. Oh, man, that was tough. I know it was tough. Had to be. Hades has given way to heaven. 
So, what do you think? Do we need to study about heaven, you think? Do we need to know more about heaven? If that's going to be your eternal home, and you're only here for a... On this earth, you know, life is a vapor. Shouldn't we know something about heaven? Shouldn't we be uh, looking forward to it? Like Paul says, while I'm here, I want to be working hard because, man, I don't have much time here. But, woo, man, soon I'm going to heaven. Because Jesus prepared the way. He's preparing a place for me right now. Can't wait to go. How many of you are going on vacation in a few weeks and can't wait to go? Man, this is going to be the vacation of a lifetime for your lifetime for all eternity. Why don't we study a little bit about it and anticipate it? Heaven. Oh, man. We need heaven. According to surveys, most people believe there's a heaven. And most believe there's a hell, but not as many believe in hell as they do in heaven. But everybody wants to believe in heaven. Heaven is a real place. As I said earlier, it's not a bunch of clouds. There are clouds in heaven, I'm sure, but we're not just going to be sitting on clouds. You know, I saw one cartoon this week where this guy was sort of half in the cloud and half out, and he was sitting down with his harp. Somebody came along who had been in heaven a lot longer and said, you'll get the hang of it after a while. <laughs> you know, if that's all there is to heaven, I think it would be monotonous. That's not all it is. I mean, in fact, that's, that's not even a real picture of heaven. Satan loves these, these misconceptions that we have. You know, we, we cut and paste our ideas of heaven from TV or from the movies or from somebody's testimony that's been to heaven and come back, you know, and we go, whoo, that was wonderful, that was wonderful. Well, you know, they might have been to heaven, I don't know, but if it goes contrary to the word of God, I, I, they've been somewhere else. They've been deluded about it, and I'm not saying people don't go to heaven and come back. I don't know. You know, Paul says he went to heaven and came back, so I guess it's possible for somebody else. But, but don't put your faith in, in the testimony. Put your faith in the Word of God, in the Bible. Uh, Satan loves to distort heaven so that we won't, we, won't, we won't anticipate it. You know, we won't love, we won't des- desire it, and we won't understand the truth. Paul says in, in 2 Corinthians 12, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, and many people believe he's talking about himself, whether in the body uh, I do not know or whether out of the body I do not know. He says, I don't know if I was, had my body on or I was in the spirit. I don't know, but man, I, I know this. He says, uh, God knows that. He says, but such a one was called up into the third heaven. The third heaven is their way of talking about the real heaven. They use the word heaven to mean atmosphere, and so you, you had the atmosphere down here and the atmosphere in the stars, and then beyond that you had heaven where God resides and so and he says he, he was caught up into the third heaven how he was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words which it is not lawful for man to utter but one thing you need to understand here he was caught up into where paradise that's the word for garden uh, the garden of Eden and so he was caught up into heaven heaven was a paradise it was like a great garden. It was it had everything. It was a natural place in a sense, something we can identify with. I believe the earth we live on was created in perfection, and 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 now this earth is a foreshadowing of what is to come. And so you know, think think in your mind of the most beautiful scene you have ever seen on this earth, the most peaceful time you have had on this earth, and multiply that by millions of millions, and that's what heaven is. I believe it's going to be a lot like this earth. We're going to talk about that more in a few minutes. But, but, but it's, it's not going to be clouds and harps. It's going to be so much more. And harps, nothing wrong with harps. I mean, you might even play the harp. Fine. Praise God. Go out and play your harp. But you know, it's just going to be more than that. A lot more. And clouds, it, it's going to be awesome. And, and we need to spend a little time talking about it. Some take this verse and say that he says it's heard inexpressible words that, 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 which are not lawful that, uh, you know, we, we shouldn't really think about heaven. We shouldn't entertain thoughts. We should live in this world, you know, you know to be too heavenly minded. You're no earthly good. Well, uh, you can think about heaven and, 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 and talk about it all the time and not live on this earth. You need to live on this earth. You need to realize, as Paul said, uh, my time on this earth is so I can be fruitful for him, but in anticipation of what He's doing, I, I, believe, I believe the other, other way. If you're, if you're heavenly minded, you know, if you're not heavenly minded, you're going to be no earthly good and you're not going to be uh, too much heavenly good either. You know, we, we need to think about heaven. It's this the goal, it's the prize. God says, run to the prize. That's the prize, man. Eternal life in heaven. You know, the greatest timeshare ever. <laughs> you know? And you don't have to pay for it. 
don't have to pay maintenance fees. It's free. Amen? Hey, y'all get excited. We're going to heaven. Those who believe, we're going to heaven. They take Paul's verse, eyes not seen, nor ear heard, nor is entered into the heart of man. In, in 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. And we stop right there. But if you go on and read that verse, verse 10, it says, God, but God has revealed them to us by his spirit. Those things that, that eyes not seen nor ear has heard, God reveals them. God wants us to know about heaven. He made heaven for you and me, and he wants to know. We're going to the beach this week. My family, I just told you that. You know, do you not think I have sat down and, and tried to figure out where we're staying? You know, and, and, and look at, 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 at the, the, the conveniences and the features that this place has. We went to the mountains one time, and I went sight unseen, and it was, it was a catastrophe, according to my wife, and she didn't like it. When we got to the campground, she thought she liked it, like the camp and rough it, but then when she saw what roughing was, we ended up that night in the motel, you know. <laughs> and I was glad we did, too. But, uh, you know, we need to prepare for where we're going. You know, I got 17, 18 people going this, this, this week. You know, I need to know if we got enough rooms, what kind of beds we got in there. I have checked this place out, you know, uh, on, on, online. So anyway, uh, any place called paradise, don't you think we ought to check it out? And I believe part of our problem why we walk around so sour-faced is we don't know what's awaiting us. We need to do like Paul. Well, death, what you got? Man, I'm going. No, if, de if death comes to me, I'm going with Jesus. I got a home prepared for me. Colossians 3 says, If you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Think on those things, he says. Where Jesus is. Where is Jesus? He's sitting at the right hand of the Father. He's in heaven. Think about it, man. And rejoice in it. Tomorrow when y'all get down in the dumps and you get in having a pity party, think about heaven. And what God, and that will maybe start your motor up so you can start doing something on this earth to get some more people going to heaven. Instead of worried about your own little problems. It's a place. Jesus is enthroned there. In fact, in Hebrews 11, where it talks about all the people, the great people of the faith, it says they were strangers and pilgrims where? On the earth. But now they desire a better, that is, a heavenly country. <clears throat> Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Whoa, wait a minute, clouds, harps, God's preparing a city. God's preparing a place, a heavenly country. Wow, where God reigns. Where you don't have to worry about Donald Trump or Obama or you know, <laughs> the Clintons or the Bushes. God's going to reign. Hallelujah. You know, folks, a little aside here, we have a chance for God to do a lot more reigning right here if we just let him, if we just seek him, instead of getting caught up in our own little petty egos. Amen? Hey. I talked to you after the service. Praise God. I love you. There's a warning, though, a very sober warning. I don't think we talk about it enough today. Heaven is not the default destination for human beings. You know what the default destination is? That's when uh, something happens to you just automatically. Uh, like on your computer, when I print something off, if I don't change the printer I want it to go to to be printed, it's automatically going to go to that printer in there. You know, boom. And so a lot of people believe that heaven is just going to come to everybody. That's her default destination, and that is a lie. Everybody has said just about believes they're in heaven, and most people believe they're heaven-bound. In fact, statistics surveys say only one in a hundred thinks they're going to hell. Well, let, 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 let's read what Jesus says. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. Just put hell right there. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are how many that find it? Few that find it. And that's the truth. That comes from Jesus. That breaks my heart. Should break my heart. Should break it even more. Should break your heart. It breaks God's heart. God doesn't want any to die and go to hell. He says he desires that all people be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. 
that's what God's heart is. But too many of us are just rebellious. You know, there are people right here probably this morning that have never asked Jesus Christ to come into their heart. They've never sought to believe in him and, and put their faith totally in him. And they monkey with it and they, we, we, we play with it. I know I did it for 24 years. Raised in a Christian home, but I, I didn't surrender my life to him. Because the Bible says you've got to come like a little child. You can't leave anything else. You've got to put it all on the altar or nothing on the altar. And there are a lot of us that are holding back. We're rebelling. You might think, well, it's not really rebelling. I'm just sort of, well, Jesus is offering you salvation. And if you don't receive it, then, then you've rebelled against it. He, he sent his son to die for your sins. And you say, well, I don't know. You know, I'm going to give up a lot, and I'm not sure, and, well, that's rebellion. Oh, God, God sent his son to die for us, and, and we're just lackadaisical about it, nonchalant, apathetic. What would that do to you if you sent your son to die for somebody, and all they got to do is believe that, that he died for your sins, and they would reject your son's death? Amen. And God's still patient. God's still merciful. God's still knocking on your heart's door and he will continue to do it. But you know, the longer you wait, the Bible says the harder your heart gets. Oh man, forgive me, Lord. You know, when you go to funerals, I tell you what, don't even listen to the preacher nine-tenths of the time because he's trying to get everybody in heaven. And I know the feeling. you got a family there, and you feel for them, and you want them to have hope. And, 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 but a lot of preachers preach that person right into heaven. I've heard them say, he's up there dancing with the angels. And I'm going, did you know that guy? And I probably sugarcoat it more than I should. And I, I really say, I don't know. I don't know about anybody's eternal destination. Only God knows. I can't tell whether you're going to heaven or hell. Only God knows. And only you know. It's between you and God. But I can see some fruit. And I should be able to say, well, I don't know. He's, he's, he's on the brink. I, don't, ooh, I didn't see much there to show me that he's going. I, I never heard him say that he believed in Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. In fact, I talked with him several times. And, and he, wouldn't, he wouldn't believe. And he would never confess Jesus as his Lord. I hope he did on his deathbed. You know, for that truck hit him going 80 miles an hour, you don't have much time to think then, do you? That's what a lot of us are counting on. We, we, you know, there's two destinations. It says that most of us are going the wrong way. Man, a preacher that doesn't preach about eternal life when they do a, a funeral needs, God's going to have something to say to them. That's one thing I try to do every funeral is talk about heaven and hell. I try to say something good about the person who died. There's always a little good there to talk about. But I try to tell everybody you're not saved by what you do. I don't care how good you were. You're never good enough. And you need a Savior and you need Jesus Christ. I do it in every funeral. <laughs> Some people walk out and say, I don't hear that said at many funerals. I have some people walk out and say, well, that was an interesting take on that. <laughs> he who believes in him is not condemned Jesus says but he who does not believe is condemned already that's our default destination hell because none of us is good all of us fall short of the glory of God and the wages of sin is death hell so what we're going to get paid for all that we do on this earth is, is death it's hell Narrow is the way that leads to God. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. This is hard. This is a hard pill to take because most of us want to believe we're pretty good and God says we're not. But here's the good news. That's why it's called the gospel, the good news. <laughs> you can be saved. You can know you're bound for heaven. Just believe in Jesus. It's a free gift. I did this one time. I pulled out my wallet and had a $10, maybe it was a $20 bill, and said, anybody want a bill, $20? And everybody just sat there. Some little five-year-old kid ran down to the front. <laughs> he got that $20. You know, that's what's wrong, folks. We don't come like little children. We don't believe. You know, 
And a little child, man, he'll believe it. That's why parents, you need to teach your children. Yeah, they need to play ball. And yeah, they need maybe some harp lessons. I don't know. Maybe, you know, they need some dance lessons, whatever they need. Yeah, they need some of that. But if you don't give them heaven, you have condemned them to hell. They need to hear a lot more about that than they need to how to play ball or whatever it is. Jesus talked more about anyone else about hell. Why? Because he desires all to be saved. Many will say at the last days, Lord, Lord, didn't I do this and that for you? And Jesus will say to those who, who, who did not love people, basically, who did not do for people, he'll say to those on the left hand, depart from me. Because, listen, if you don't love people, you don't love God. The Bible says that. So he says, it's not a fact, it's not a matter of doing good, it's a matter of loving Jesus. And if you love Jesus, you're going to bear fruit. So he says to those on his left hand who didn't do, uh, love other people, he says, depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. That's where you're going. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that's where you're going. You're going to hell. Now you might not like that, I, I even hate to preach it sometimes, but that's what, the, that's what Jesus said. And it's free. It's free. <laughs> Aim at heaven and you get everything else on earth thrown in. You get a better life here. If you aim for heaven and get it right with God and get prepared. Fear him, the Bible says, Jesus says, who is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. 2 Thessalonians 1.9 says, hell is, the, is, is being shut out from the presence of the Lord. You say, well, hey, I can do that. I can live. No, Jesus is everything. God is everything good. God is everything pure. God is everything holy. God is everything just. He's everything that is good, holy, just, pure, righteous. He's all of that wrapped in one. What do you think hell is? It's the absence of good, holy, true, pure, just. It's the absence of all that. It's a terrible place. It's a place of utter misery. You don't want to go there. And God is saying to you and me this morning, I have let my son, I've sent my son to die on the cross for you. Just please believe. Paul says, I beg of you, I beg of you, I beseech you, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ that you may be saved. And you as Christians this morning who know you're saved and you believe, do you have a burden for the lost? Well, I can't share with my family, they won't receive it. Well, try it anyway. I'm preaching to myself right now. I really am. I'm not as burdened about the lost in my own family as I should. You know what? I'm really good with my family. I'm not talking about my children right now. I'm talking about, you know, the outside. I'm really good at condemning. <laughs> I'm really good at saying, you don't know how to raise your children. You discipline them right. You wouldn't have near the problem. If you would manage your finances, I'm really good at that. God's convicting me. God's convicting me. <laughs> Pray for them. Your condemnation is nothing. In fact, your condemnation con condemns yourself. You're going to have to give an answer for that. I don't do that. How many of y'all do that? <laughs> Got one raising of a hand. We all. I mean, I'm conf I, you know, I sit up here and confess my sins, not so you'll see how wicked a person I am, but you, you can do that, that's fine. But just see your own wickedness. Because a lot of people want to say to well, the preacher, he's, he's different, he's good, you know. Don't say a curse word around him, he's got virgin ears, he's never heard anything like that. Well, I'd rather you not say curse words around me and be provocative and vulgar, but hey, I used to hang out with the boys. Don't know more. Hang out with some good boys. Matthew 13, the Son of Man will send out his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend. And those who practice lawlessness, cast, cast them into the furnace of fire, there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. That's, that's hell. That is your default, default destination. That's it. We're bound for hell. We're condemned already. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. 
only way. You can believe those signs on the back of bumpers coexist. You know, you can believe in the Swami or whoever you want, and you're going to get, no, according to the Bible, no. In fact, the Bible is, Christianity is the only faith, check this out yourself, Christianity is the only faith that says you can't earn your way to heaven. You can't be smart enough, you can't be good enough. Christianity is the only faith that says Buddhism, Hinduism, Zoroastrianism, whatever it is. Christianity is the only faith that says you need a savior. You cannot earn it. You cannot merit it. Every other faith in the world, people say, well, all the religions are the same. No, they're not. All religions, other religions are the same in the sense that they say there's some way you can do something to make your own way to heaven. You can have scales and balancing out. And the good. No, the Bible says no. It says there's only one way, and it's through Jesus Christ because he died for your sins. No other prophet in history claims to be Jesus in that way, that, 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 they, that, their sal- that, that your salvation rests upon what they did. That they died on the cross for your sins and you believe that it's a free gift. Okay. I hope you got worried about that part. Because you don't need to be worried. You can know you're going to heaven. If we confess our sins, 1 Peter 1, 9 says, and, uh, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from how much unrighteousness? All unrighteousness. All unrighteousness mean, means you're totally right. You're totally holy, you're totally pure in the eyes of God because the blood of Jesus has covered you and washed away your sins. And so when God looks at you, he says, you can go to heaven because you're totally pure and right and holy. You didn't do it. My son did it. But hey, because you believe in my son and you accepted him and you loved him and as much as I love him, you know, I'm going to let you go. I want you to go. I want you to be with me for all eternity solely based on the fact that you believe in my son's death and resurrection and his ascension and that he died for you. That's it. It's that simple. It's not going to be an easy life. Christianity can be a hard life because God demands a lot of us. But He says we can immediately go to heaven when we die, immediately. Absent in the body, Paul says, to be present with the Lord. Jesus tells the thief on the cross, today, today you will be with me where? In paradise. Paradise, that wonderful garden place. If Jesus didn't say, today you're going to be with me on the cloud. <laughs> now you're going to be with me in paradise. In fact, even the Old, Old Testament says you immediately go with God. The dust will return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit will return to the God who gave it. Ecclesiastes. Jesus gives us a picture of the rich man and Lazarus in, in the New Testament where the rich man had bypassed Lazarus for years and years and years as Lazarus was in need and hungry and, and poor and he bypasses him and then they end up in heaven and hell and uh, the rich man says that so it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. That's another way of saying to paradise. The rich man also died and was buried and being in torments in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and he saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Heaven is a place. Hell is a place. It's real. It's not some ethereal, it's real. You're going to spend eternity in heaven or in hell. You're going to spend it in joyous, blissful, pure, total enjoyment the rest of your life, or you're going to spend it in utter misery. And don't believe me. Believe the word of God. It's a place. It's, it's a place. It, you know, you read about the heaven, there's a temple, and God's on a throne, and there's musical instruments. You know, there, there, there's fruit. There's saints under the altar. And, you know, evidently those saints, have, they're clothed in a, new, in, in a new gown, so evidently they got some kind of form. You know, they're just not some Casper the Ghost figure. You know, I don't know. I don't understand it all, but I think God gives us enough insight to know. Think about heaven in terms of a place. When we die, believers in Christ will go to heaven, but it will not be the same place we will live for all eternity. Whoa, what's he saying here? He's gone off. He's gone. I, don't, I don't know all about heaven, but listen to this. Listen to this. And you could, you've all read it before. Revelation chapter 21. Now, John says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. When we die, we're going to go to heaven. We're going to go to this place that God's got prepared for us right now. But when he comes again, he's going to bring a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. 
Peter says that they're, they're going to be dissolved by the, by, the, by, the, by the fire. A lot of people believe they're going to be cleansed and renewed. But anyway, it is, it's going to be, see, see, the first heaven, I mean, excuse me, the first earth is corrupted. God's got to do something to make it clean. So God's going to send, and that's why I was telling you a while ago, a while ago when you think about heaven, think about the most joyous experiences you've ever had on this earth because God's preparing us a new earth where we can see all kinds of wonderful things and enjoy all kinds of wonderful experiences. And we don't have to, I think we're going to garden. But we're not going to have thorns. We're not going to have weeds. We're not going to have Roundup. <laughs> There's going to be no need for Roundup. What do you say, James? Oh, is that heaven or what? <laughs> That's heaven, man. We're just going to plant it, and it's going to grow. And we're going to go out and water it. Maybe I don't know what we're going to do. We're going to prick the fruit. We're going to harvest it. We're going to have a new body. There was no more sea than I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle or the dwelling place of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. Hallelujah. I, man, I don't want hell. I want heaven. And he showed them a pure river of water of life. Notice all the stuff in there. A holy city. There was a place. There was a tabernacle. God's going to dwell with us. And then in the next verse in Revelation 22, he showed them a pure river of water of life. This isn't clouds going to be pure water. Y'all worried about the water you drink right now? You heard a lot of bad stuff about it, haven't you? Hey, we're going to have pure crystal water. Pure, clear as crystal proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb in the middle of the street. There's a street in heaven. <clears throat> Probably a whole lot more. In the middle of the street on either side, there's the tree of life. Remember the tree of life in the Garden of Eden, which bore 12 fruits. There's, there's going to be fruit. You know, and, and each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree uh, were for the healing of the nations. Now I say, then brethren, the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption and uh, inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we will all be changed. We will all be transformed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Those who believe in Jesus Christ will get a new body. I don't know about you, but man, I got problems with my rotator cuff or something up here. I got a little spot on my ear. I think it might be cancerous. I don't know. Going to the doctor in a few weeks. I don't know. You know, I know I'm wearing out. I know I'm not the man I used to be. I'm looking forward to a new body. I'm excited. You say, how do you know? I know by faith. That's how I know. I'm putting all my eggs. My daddy told me never put all my eggs in one basket, you know. Don't put all your money in one bank or one financial resource. Shift it around because one of them might fall, you know. But I'm putting all my eggs in this basket. And you need to also. God's perfect plan is to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, even Christ. Do you love Jesus? Can you wait to live with Jesus? Are you expecting? Oh, man. Some of you are saved this morning, but you're just not walking the way you need to walk with God. And you know it. God's convicting you. Just go ahead. Get it over with. Get it over with today. Don't wait. If you walk out of here, Satan's going to lie to you. Get it straight, man. God, 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 God knows your inner thoughts. He knows the hair on your head. Just... So you can look forward to heaven. Are you looking forward to heaven? Start, start, start studying about it. Start reading about it. Look forward to it. It's okay. Remember, you're here to bear fruit till Jesus comes. and You're here to be used up for him and poured out like a drink offering for him right now. But man, it's all going to be worth it. Paul says it's all going to be worth it. You know, I think that's part of the problem. We're too comfortable. We're too, we're, we're, it's too convenient right now. We're not suffering for Christ. Therefore, we just want to hang around here a little longer. We're not ready for what he's got in store for us. You know, if you're letting your life be poured out for Jesus right here on this earth, then, and, and you're suffering, you're suffering persecution for his name's sake, you can't wait till the day you clear out of this place until, until, until God takes you home. Are you telling others about heaven and hell? You need to tell them both stories because they're not going to know they need a heaven until they realize they're going to hell. That's a motivator. 
Should be. This morning, do you know? Do you know if you die where you'll end up? And if you're banking on your good works, just let me tell you, Jesus said, no way, no how. We need Jesus. And he's offering you the gift of life this morning, and it's free. All you have to do is say, I'm a sinner. I confess, come like that little child down the aisle and get your $20. Man, if you would do that this morning, if you would give your life to Jesus Christ, I'd give you $100. It's so important. Father God, thank you for your word and the truth of it. Lord, I have a hard time with hell. I, I really do. It's, it's, oh, what a utterly miserable place that will be. Lord, I ask now that you forgive me of my sins. Thank you, Father, that you do. You say if we confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins and cleanse us from all our sin and, and, and uh, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so, Father, I just... I just believe today i trust you lord i did that a long time ago i don't need to do it again but lord i i just continually need to confess my sins and and realize lord that you cleanse me all the time from all unrighteousness and so i want to be made right with you today i i i profess that jesus christ is my lord and savior lord i don't want to be ashamed of that gospel message i want to be able to tell it to the president of the united states or whoever else would come in my path Talk to them about sincerely about heaven and hell. Thank you, Father, that you have a place prepared for those who love you. Lord, a place called heaven, a new, new heaven and a new earth and a new Jerusalem. Lord God, I, I, I want to live on this earth and I want to bear much fruit till you come. But Lord, I, I want to live expecting to live with you forever. Thank you for that promise. Guide and lead and direct us now. Use us. And, and Lord, I just pray for every soul here to be saved. In Jesus' name we pray. <coughs> Amen. Bells are going to play for us now. We're not going to have a regular uh, closing hymn. As it does, meditate on the Word of God and what's been said this morning. And just put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. <coughs>
Thank you. Man, what a way to end this service. If you have God speaking to your heart, you know there's something that he's spoken to you you need to do today. Tell somebody. Tell somebody. Before you leave this room, before you leave this church building, Dario's here, I'm here, we have deacons here, um, Ricky's here. Just go to somebody and talk to them about what God's put on your heart so that you can confirm that in your own life. I'm going to ask Pastor Dario if he'll stand and, and yeah, all of you stand together. Let's all stand together and he will lead us in, in a benediction. Heavenly Father, we praise you this morning for your great love. Thank you that you created us to have a relationship with you and thank you that even that because of our sin you loved us so much that you sent your son to come on this earth to take the punishment for our sins, to go on the cross and die for our sins so that through faith in him we can become your children and live with you forever. We praise you for that and I pray that this will be a reality for every person in this life. Let your Holy Spirit convince us all of our need for Christ. And then, Father, thank you that through faith in Jesus Christ, to trust in what he did on the cross for us, we can become your children. And thank you for this great privilege, Father. Bless these words in our hearts, and we praise you for your love. Amen.